we're going to party like it's 2018 because I sure don't want to party like it's 2020. What an awful year, but a good story here. Akron, 21 game losing streak. Last time they won, 2018. Tion Dollar runs it up the middle for a touchdown. Akron leads, and guess what? It's dollared again. Some would say that's a dollared. Akron wins 31 3, breaking the 21 game losing streak. And that's how we begin. We're handing out a dollar in celebration. Losing streak no more. Welcome into college football final. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, Matt Berry. I promise you one thing, gentlemen. The party in Conway, South Carolina has not stopped based on what we saw Get Saturday. Real. And what Get was real. the game of the day? Oh, they were getting weird. The mullets know how to do it. Mormons, mullets, under two minutes left. BYU down 13-7. Zach Wilson, Dak Milne, tiptoes, 41-yard touchdown. BYU was getting chunk plays running and throwing. They had a 91-yard touchdown pass. And the first play of the game called back because of a penalty here. Milne doing a great job tiptoeing the sideline. Come on, Sean, to clears. you got to push him out of bounds make a tack. So that's momentum ending in the first half here. BYU up 14-13. Seven seconds left in the half. Now this is, watch this. Wilson throws a deep pass. It's picked off by Derek Bush in the end zone. Watch what Coastal does to Wilson That's okay blocking there. him. Not okay. And they attack him, and this is a little extra. And Coastal Carolina came in this game with an attitude, like they had something to prove. And this is part of that attitude. They're going to attack the best player on BYU's team. And then they go at it. Bench is clear. BYU trying to stick up for their quarterback. Little pushing. I love it. Got yeah, out of hand. Little pushing, little shoving. This is football. It's going to be played that way. And the energy you had going into halftime. So now fourth quarter, Coastal Carolina down 17-16. Grayson McCall fights Cameron Brown 20 yards. Stopped at the two-yard line. BYU's pass defense played well in this one. They only gave up 85 passing yards to Grayson McCall. Next play, C.J. Marable punches it in. Two-yard touchdown. Coastal fails the two-point conversion. They're up 22-17. 5 seconds left. No timeouts. Here comes Wilson. Chance for the win. Wilson finds Gunnar Romney 33 yards. This is a great catch on the sideline. Now they got to hustle up. Get on the ball. Clock is ticking. 26 seconds left. 7 seconds left now. Wilson to Mill. Sideline 13 yards. So 3 seconds left. One last play from the 18. Wilson finds Milne, and can he be great in yeah. winning? Shades of Kevin Dyson, Tennessee Titans versus the St. Louis Rams Super Bowl. Inches from greatness, Mateo Sadipo, the game-winning tackle in Coastal Carolina, the first team in Sun Belt history to start 10-0. 22-17 the final. What a win for the shots and Jamie Chadwell. There's no words can explain it. Um, you know, we heard all week that we're going to get killed. We're not big enough. We're not ready. And our guys never believe that. They're resilient. And Coastal football's here, and we're here to stay. But the, the push you guys had up front the whole game, I think that caught the nation by surprise. You don't seem surprised a bit. I'm not. You know, our, our small guys have been tested all year. They, everybody takes them at their size. They took it personal, and they said, hey, coach, run it behind us. We're going to make it happen, and we controlled the clock. That was the only shot we had to win, and we did it. All right, uh, this was well choreographed. Well, we got choreographed in the locker room later. Hey, you need to come in there because it's going to be special. <laughs> <laughs> what a run it's been. Coastal Carolina, they've now won 11 straight games dating back to last season. Only Notre Dame has a longer active winning streak. And it's a 10-0 start in the best in Sun Belt history. Mentioned that during the highlight. And it has now beat two AP-ranked teams. Have the shots this season. It had zero such wins prior to Saturday. Think I'm going to get a mullet. Still deciding that one going into next week. You look at the Chanticleers. They had everything to prove in this game, and they did so on the ground. And give these two teams credit. This game was put together this week. Liberty had Coastal Carolina. Liberty canceled. BYU says, we'll play. They go on the road. They go to Coastal Carolina. Now, this is a Coastal Carolina team. If you're watching, you could see the size difference. Come to this game averaging 222 yards rushing on the season. Physical football team in the Sun Belt. But now here comes number 13 in country in BYU. They ran the ball for 281 yards against this defense. And you watch it. Their center is 5'9", 290. He was the smallest guy up front. I'm impressed by not just the fact that they ran the ball, but they did a lot of it between the tackles. They were physical, memorable, 132 yards rushing, and they made the plays they needed to make, continue to put the pressure on BYU. And by the end of the game, 
They felt like their defense could close them out, and that's absolutely what they did. They were impressive. So as a result now on Tuesday, I want to see where the committee ranks Coastal Carolina. We know they're number 18 right now. I think there's an interesting discussion brewing with respect to which group of five team should get that automatic bid for a New Year's Six Bowl game. Now, we know Cincinnati's sitting at number seven, but you take both of these two teams' resumes and you compare them. I'd say the shot to clears win in the resume category. They've beaten Louisiana, currently ranked, just beat the 13th ranked team in the country. Cincinnati's best two wins right now, UCF, SMU, not ranked. Like Cincinnati, the Chanticleers have also been real dominant. They're yeah. winning their games on an average by 20 points a game. They've also played two extra games over Cincy. So I just want to see what the committee now thinks after that impressive performance by Coastal Carolina. And you touched on it. I think we should applaud both of these programs. Absolutely. The last yeah. minute when a game went away, they said, Not you know scared. what? Not we'll scared. make a trip. Let's Still. play some football. And we were treated to a phenomenal football game. What about Alabama? 29 and a half point favorites against LSU. Uh, how many points? Oh. 29 and a half. That's the biggest favorite they've been over LSU in 45 years. Also, virtual lock implications for okay. one Jesse Palmer and Najee Harris made it look good early. LSU should have opted out of this game. <laughs> Mac Jones started 3 of 3. Najee Harris, the run game, got going. Najee Harris, 145, three touchdowns. All right, 21 nothing. Kayshawn Boutte runs into the end. Zone. What is in? Okay, wait. Boutte is a true freshman. Watch this again. Drops the ball before going into the end zone. Takes a crazy skip. And how about his teammate, Jontre Kirkland? He realized. on the spot. He like, <laughs> comes over. He's like, dude, I'm going to do you a solid. Coach O's not going to scream at you. You know what? That's a dollar from everyone. We're not going to have the dollar or the animation, but it's still a dollar. Mac Jones, Devontae Smith. Then it just got absolutely embarrassing. Devontae Smith, eight catches, 231 and three touchdowns. He can only get one helmet sticker tonight but he probably deserved two or three. Guys, Jesse, it got to the point where they literally couldn't cover him. No, they couldn't. And what's crazy is he was making a lot of these plays against Derek Stingley Jr., arguably the best cover corner in all of college football. Guys, he had 219 yards and three TDs at the half. The half punctuated by maybe the catch of his career other than the national championship It game. really was, and that's what it, he's just not a deep ball catcher. He will go up in traffic and get it. He'll go up and make the terrific play, maybe the best receiver in the country. Largest home loss by a defending national champion. I think we played better in the second half. I think it was good experience for us. So I think we played really well offensively in the game and you know sort of controlled the tempo of the game offensively. So uh, and I thought we played better on defense in the second half. So. Uh, we made some adjustments and the kids responded well, so just got to keep on keeping on. Did he just smile? Did he just yeah, it was, it was a almost. Okay. Almost. All right. SEC Championship, Florida trying to cinch up the SEC East. Kyle Trask to Kyle Pitts, 15 yard and game. Nobody this year has been able to cover number 84 for Florida. I would have loved to see Isaiah Simmons last year from Clemson try because I think he might have had a shot. And then Trask to Trayvon Grimes, Florida up 10 7. So 37 seconds left. First and goal again for Florida. Kind of a sluggish start for the Gators. Here, Trash to Kadarius Tony for the touchdown. They did a nice job offensively moving Kadarius Tony around. He's one of the best slot receivers in the country. They sent him in motion and hard to keep up with. First and goal for the Gators. Trask aims for Jacob Copeland, but Grimes jumps in front, makes a catch. He's like, hey, Copeland's like, dude, I've got one TD this year. You've already got eight. Why do you got to be so greedy and selfish? Grimes is like, no, nah, bro. My ball. Then look, yeah, let's not show friends and show business. Florida up 24 to 7. Then Trask to Copeland. They clinch the SEC East 31 19. The final. Dan Mullen happy with where his squad is. What did the SEC East Championship in, in, in this year, you know, the hardest year in the history of this league, we're going to play 10 conference games, regular season conference games uh, to win, win our division is, is pretty special and shows a lot of, uh, you know, what, our, what, our, what the team's at and what our coaches and the whole program's at. The, the goal is to win the East uh, because that's what we can control coming into the season. Now, you go to our guys, they want to accomplish an awful lot more than that. Uh, but that's all we can control coming into a season, and we were able to do that. And then, um, so we now now we have the opportunity to control being SEC champions, and uh, you know that's the next step. By the way, Uni Swagger, give me those blue helmets all day. You like those? Love them. SEC championship set, Bama, 
Florida, 10th time in the SEC Championship game, brings back memories. The old ball coach uh, more than double any other matchup in any conference. Urban Meyer, they were all in it. Two teams have combined to win 15 of the 28 SEC titles since the first one was played in 1992. So, Joey, from Florida's perspective, what is Kyle Trask? I, I think beyond the stats, beyond the nine straight games with three passing touchdowns, you got to realize he's doing this without a rushing game. They had 19 yards running in this game, and he still put up 400 yards. His timing, his location, standing in the pocket, backing up, watch the location of the ball. Wide open to the sideline, but it's been the location is why they've been so good at getting the yak afterwards. It's where he's placing this football as they can turn it up and go upfield with it. Kyle Trask leads the country in touchdown passes by eight. By eight and they cannot run the ball. He throws this ball before the receiver's open, puts it right between four defenders, right on the money. Touchdown pass. He's been so impressive throwing the ball, and that's why they're explosive. Jesse, what about the Alabama D? Can this defense slow down the passing game? It's as simple as that. Now, here's the deal. The last six games, Bama's pass D has looked a lot better. They're doing a better job on the back end in coverage. Their pass rush has been better, but they have not seen an offense like what the Florida Gators got. Joey just showed you. Kyle Trask playing at an historic rate. Kyle Pitts is 6'6", six, six at tight end, who can run routes. Kadarius Toney's so good at his route running, changing direction. He's dangerous after the catch. And Trevon Crimes is six foot four and physical. It's not going to be enough I think for Bama in the secondary to have their corners and Sertan and Joe play well. It's everybody. It's the safeties battle and right. It's Malachi Moore in the slot. They have to win their fair share in one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to have to tackle the catch and just slow the Gators down, but so far, no one's been able can, to. Can I take the over? I was going to say, that. can't wait to see what the point is. It is going to be 65 to 64. It's just so unfortunate. Got to wait till December 19th, two weeks for that one, but it is going to be fun. Alabama and Florida set up in Atlanta for the SEC championship. We are just getting started. And speaking of, Ohio State returns to action. Can the Buckeyes find their way towards the Big Ten? championship against Michigan State plus Clemson and Notre Dame on a collision course for a rematch. We'll have their highlights and more. We're off and running. This is college football final. I'm not your friend. Absolute chaos. This is happening. There is a postseason. Stop. They're going to have some difficult choices to make. College football final is brought to you by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. Matt, Jesse, and Joey back with you. Before we show the Ohio State game against Michigan State, this is what they were missing coming into the day. Ryan Day out. 23 other players, including three starting offensive linemen, COVID protocol, would that matter on the road? They flew in late Friday night. Let's find out. Larry Johnson, he was the interim coach, filling in for day. 8.55 in the first, third and goal. Justin Fields keeps it himself. You talk about the offensive line. They did a nice job up front. Justin Fields had plenty of time. Ran for 104, which is a career high for Justin Fields. You'd mentioned early on a lot of it was his running ability. Thanks to handoff, keeps it himself. 44-yard game. It was a nice job by Fields on designed runs and on scrambles. Protection was shaky some of the time because of those three offensive linemen out. They were also able to get Trey Sermon going in the run game as well. We'll show that in just a little bit later. Fields passed to Garrett Wilson, 28 yards, touchdown. And Garrett Wilson just finds a nice soft spot on the sideline, then the stiff arm to get in it. Between Wilson and Alave, this offense is explosive on the outside. Two young, very good receivers. And again, we've, we've seen a lot of them trying to get comfortable with each other because they haven't played many games. Fields takes it in. Ohio State up 28 nothing at the half. Fourth quarter, Buckeyes lead. Fields, you mentioned the duo to Alave. This is a makeup play for Alave. He fumbled twice earlier in the game. And how about the Buckeyes defense? They forced four turnovers. They look good. 18 straight Big Ten wins. Here's Fields. Yeah, this week was crazy. You know, we had a few guys out, so uh, a few guys had to stand, uh, step up and play. So I think those guys did a great job. You know, uh, Coach Day had, had COVID, so I think Coach Day did a great job leading our team. And we had a bunch of leaders step up this week for our team, so it was just great seeing that leadership grow on the team. I thought about the fact that to go here, coming in East Eastlands and get a win. And I want to make sure when I turn it back over to Coach Day, we were 5-0. That was the biggest spot in my mind. I did not want to go back Sunday and stand in front of that team and after losing the game. All right, so here's why it matters. If Ohio State can't play Michigan next week because of COVID, 
Indiana an opportunity to play for the Big Ten Championship. Jack Tuttle in for Michael Penix Jr. finds Peyton Hendershot back in the end zone. And A.M. did not have a great offensive game, but they found a way to stay ahead and get out early. And Tuttle smart. Find a way to get the ball to Ty Fry, folks. Yeah, Jack Tuttle, the Utah transfer, looked very poised, and it's easy to when you have the receivers and playmakers they've got. You got Hendershot, you got Fry Fogle, you've got Wop Fillier. What a throw. And Fillier's one of the best slot receivers in the country. Finds a way to get open. Great throw to the back of the end zone. Fourth quarter now. Wisconsin, one last opportunity. Graham Merch sacked uh, by Micah McFadden. I love this defense. One of the most aggressive in the country. Three more sacks, and they create two takeaways. And then Merch recovers the bad snap. Pass to Chimre DK, broken up. Six points allowed for Indiana. The fewest against a ranked opponent since 1993, and they love it. This guy like Michael Penix is such a special player. But uh, Jack Tuttle, he stepped up, played really, really well. But this football team right responded. If you ask, your recruits, come play for this man. Best coach in America. Yeah, I just, I just love this football team. <laughs> hey, yeah, baby. Right here. Best, coach, best America, coach in the nation right here, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Man, we just, uh, it's a special group. It's a special group. Doing special things together. Hey! <laughs> and to do it without Penix Jr. and then you get to photobomb the coach's interview, I think all things are going well for Indiana. What about Clemson? Back in action, taking on Virginia Tech, and Trevor Lawrence using his legs a lot. Very athletic quarterback, and surprisingly, this is only his second career game with multiple rushing touchdowns. He looked good. Clubs it up 10-7. We saw a lot of sluggish starts out of some of the best teams in the country, but they finally got it going. He looked good. He's 6'6", 220. He's got to do a better job of sliding, though, and protecting himself. He's taken a lot of big shots this year, man. Team loves that, though. Lower the shoulder, fights his way in. Lawrence, second career game, as Joey said, with multiple rushing TDs. The first one was September 24th, 2020, this year. Clubs up 24-10. Cornell Powell, 65 yard. And Cornell Powell dropped this same exact route right before this. They went back to him, get his confidence back. Let's go deep and score one. And then here's former walk-on Darian Rancher, won Disney Spirit Award this week for being the most inspirational player in college football, led a peaceful protest on campus supporting Black Lives Matter. He gets his first touchdown this year. The team loves it. Clemson wins six straight ACC championship game appearance. It means a lot. I mean, usually, um, like our last loss was in the national championship. Didn't get to go and play that game again, or get to go play that team again. So uh, I'm excited to be able to go back and play them again. Obviously, I wasn't able to play, so I'm excited for that challenge. And just I think the team's excited for it uh, to get another chance and have have a couple weeks to prepare and get ready for Charlotte. Couple weeks. Remember, the ACC amended the rules earlier in the week, so it will be Notre Dame. It will be Clemson. Speaking of Notre Dame, they had to get by Syracuse. Notre Dame down 7-3. Virtual lock implications. Joey Galloway loves the point totals. Took the over. Ian Book, 28 yard touchdown. And this is what Ian Book does. Early in the season, people wanted could he throw because he ran the ball so well for touchdowns. Still an athletic quarterback that finds his way into the end zone. Point total 51 and a half. So you were going to need Syracuse to cooperate, but when you're finding Javon McGinley for Ian Book, you're going to get points. If there was an All-America team for the second half of the season, Javon McKinley would be on that team. He has been a monster on the outside making big body catch. And when he finally started McK finding McKinley, he started getting in rhythm, and then he's able to avoid the sack and do this again. Yeah, he had eight carries for 53 yards and two touchdowns. Stays on his feet, not the most athletic quarterback, but finds a way to get loose, and once he gets in the secondary, he finds a way to stay. Notre Dame will body blow, body blow, body blow, then they'll go for the kill. The way Book's playing, McKinley's playing, Ben Skoranek at the other receiver position the best football they've played they're peaking at the right time 45 21 the win looking forward to it just uh another matchup against a really good team it's going to be fun and um you know our team's ready we're getting ready for that and again just excited it's just another great opportunity for our team and we know they got some guys you know that didn't play us the first time that'll be back uh we just got to do what we got to do and focus on um you know our side of the ball and, and just take care of ourselves and uh just excited to get to preparation and just get ready to you know go to work and again have another exciting matchup against clemson Ian Book spoke during the Clemson game about facing Clemson again in the ACC championship. It's going to be a thriller. Clemson's offense, Notre Dame's defense have been the class of the conference this season. If the current AP rankings hold, it'll be the first AP top five matchup in ACC championship game since the conference championship added in 2005. This game notoriously is 
put someone against Clemson, watch Clemson beat them down and go to the college football playoff. Round two is always better. I think Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed was better the second time around. Right. What do we think in the second time around for Clemson? For the second Dame? time in a row, can Notre Dame handle Clemson's blitz package? What I saw from their offensive line tight ends and running backs, the first goal round was the best I've ever seen an offense handle Brent Venables and all the different pressures that he throws at you. That's his MO. He'll bring guys to the linebacker position, safety position. He'll drop guys in and out. There's got to be great communication up front with the offensive line, working in conjunction with tight ends and running backs to allow Ian Book a pocket to work through his progressions, find open receivers, and make big plays. The first time around, Notre Dame ran for over 200 yards. They were able to gash them, and Ian Book had time to throw. Right here, you see the offensive line sliding to the right. Again, you've got tight ends releasing out on routes. The running back picks up a guy in the backfield, and there's a cluster. We talked about Ian Book's athleticism and his ability to find open lanes, get out to green space, and make plays. Now, this time around, Brent Venables will have a bye week to put in some new looks and pressures he hasn't quite yet shown, and Notre Dame's going to have to do it without their starting center, Jared Patterson, who's now out for the rest of the year. What about the Clemson defense? This was a defense that was banged up in that Notre Dame game the first time around. Tyler Davis was out defensive tackle. Skowski, Jones, two linebackers were out. But their defense still leads the ACC in yards per game allowed. They're blitzing. Brent Venables will be ready for this Notre Dame defense, this Notre Dame offense this time around. Expect to see a lot of pressure. Expect to be an aggressive defense. When you look at this game, this one is the one that matters to everyone else outside of the top four. ACC has the best chance of getting two teams in. If Clemson wins this game, you expect to see Notre Dame and Clemson still stay in that top four. So if you're a Texas A&M sitting at five, if you're a Florida sitting at six, if you're a Cincinnati who is at seven, you're hoping that Clemson loses this game. You're hoping that it eliminates the two-team possibilities so that another team can get in that spot. Clemson will be a much better football team this time around going against a Notre Dame team that is also playing much better football you now. You keep mentioning that we got the full complement of the players for Clemson this time, and yes. you mentioned what it can do to the rankings. Let's just say, for instance, Clemson goes on to beat Notre Dame and Florida were to upset Alabama in the SEC championship. Then we don't know what would happen to the loser of this game. Have to wait again till December 19th for round two of Clemson and Notre Dame. Still ahead on college football final. Hey, Texas A&M saying don't forget about us in the college football playoff talk. We won't. Their highlights of Auburn coming up. Plus, Jesse and Joey go to the touchscreen. Not much is going to change within the top five, but the discussion could. That and more still ahead on college football final. College football playoff lives on ESPN. Well, Texas A&M find their way into the bracket of the final four college football playoff teams taking on Auburn under four minutes left in the second quarter. What about this play by Bo Nix? This is the best play Bo Nix has had in his young two-year career at Auburn. He runs 57 yards for a five-yard touchdown. Amazing. That was incredible. Auburn cut the deficit 10-7, and then Nix keeps it here himself. Auburn takes the lead. How about this is the first time Nix has rushed for multiple touchdowns in a game. Such a great athlete that surprises me. So early fourth quarter, Texas A&M needed it. Kellen Mond's pass. This is right place, right time by Jalen Widemeyer. Just how you draw it up. Zacoby McLean, he's going to have a tough time watching film on this. Goes right through his hands. And how about Kellen Moore now, guys? 18 TD passes, only two picks on the season. Widemeyer, two touchdowns on Saturday, 12 minutes left. Left next incomplete pass broken up by Miles Jones. Auburn forces the punt fourth down. Great play here. Anaya Smith back to return the punt. And Smith normally wears zero but with the nose. Two same numbers on the field. Smith is wearing 19 to avoid confusion. Calls the fair catch to watch this. All right, guys, this is like a pit change with jerseys. It's underneath all of this to change numbers. All of this to go. Fair catch of the be number zero. And then Smith now lined up wearing zero. Mon, 38 pass to Smith. You guys following this? 19 0 0 19. Got it all. Texas AM moves the chains to the four yard line. Then Smith, four yards for the touchdown. AM outscored Auburn 17 0 in the fourth quarter. Jimbo Fisher, Aggies win. I just think we're growing up as a team and understanding how to play. And the momentum swings don't bother us as much anymore. And we're learning to play the next play, do what you control, what you control, and answer and drive. Critical plays in the game. Our guys are growing up and knowing how to play those plays. What will your message be to this team about the focus and mentality they need to close out the season and position themselves for the playoffs? Get ready to play Ole Miss next week. This lasts for 24 hours in the morning. We get ready to play one game at a time.
And now let's take a look at who you guys think could be in the college football playoff with the Capital One fan vote. There were no big games this weekend, so none of our top five lost. Yeah. So these top fives you see here are the same top fives we had last week. Jess, talk about the bottom of your top five with AM. Hey, well, I agree with the committee. When you look at the cusp, the teams on the outside looking in, Ohio State at four, AM at five, and Florida at six. Florida is the only one of those teams that controls its destiny. If they win out and they end up beating BAM in the SEC title game, we know Florida is going to get in. I've still got Texas AM at number five. I think after the win against Auburn, they've set themselves up, I think, to lock in that number five spot heading into the conference championship week. They certainly look the part. They're a complete team. They've got a great resume. They've beaten the Gators. Their loss comes against the number one team but because of the one loss they do not control their destiny their win against Auburn though I think really hurt Cincinnati's chances of getting in the playoffs. and I still have Cincinnati sitting at number five and we haven't seen them play since November 21st when they beat UCF they do have a game against Tulsa which Tulsa was ranked number 24 in the last college football rankings so that would give them a ranked win if they pull that off they are sitting in a position though that they're probably going to need some help yep. to move up but I still like their defense I like what I've seen out of that team when they're running the ball I'm going to keep them at number five. Jess, go to the top okay. of your rankings. They're going to play what, Tulsa what twice, got? by the way. Okay, so, hey, no surprise here, right? Bama one, Notre Dame two. Yeah. I would say this. Notre Dame today is playing better football than they did when they beat Clemson at the start of November. Javon McKinley and Ben Skoranek have become monsters at wide receiver. The way Ian Book's playing, they're the most complete they've looked. And how about Bama? I, I think Devontae Smith just got another touchdown for Mac yeah. Jones, and their defense has been terrific now these last six games. And I agree with everything you said about Alabama, Notre Dame. We're going to see Clemson play Notre Dame, so it'll get another shot. Ohio State is interesting, though. Yeah. For me, sitting at number three, their situation is they have five wins. And so they got Michigan next. And they've needed to get the six wins to get into the Big Ten championship game. So they've sort of been sitting there hoping to play games. We'll find out if Michigan's going to play. If they get that six game into the Big Ten championship game and win that against the Northwestern team, then they're solidly in the top four. If they don't get that game in, it's going to be a lot of question, a lot of work for the committee. Back to you, Matt. All right, Joey, yeah, a lot of questions right now. No changes as of yet, but there is still plenty of football to be played. Don't forget to give your Capital One fan vote via Sports Center's Twitter handle on Monday, especially a big one in the ACC this coming weekend, North Carolina at Miami. And speaking of North Carolina, by the way, appreciate you guys' hustle getting back here. We do our best. Had Western Carolina on Saturday. Look, on paper, not a great game. Uh, okay. No. But a great story coming in. Mac Brown, head coach of North Carolina, former colleague, his daughter, Catherine, oh. was on Jeopardy this week. Not only was Catherine on Jeopardy. Did she win 22 Gs? Catherine won. Wow. Now, I want you to know, this is a big moment for me. I am announcing this as my official audition to be the host of Jeopardy. Let's go to the highlight. North Carolina taking on Western Carolina. And here's Mac Brown. Of course, you know he's a proud papa. Here he was on his daughter's appearance on the game show. It's hard to get on Jeopardy. I don't have any conversations with her because she's way smarter than I am. All right, so Jeopardy questions for our analyst. The UNC player lead the ACC in touchdowns responsible for. First quarter, Sam Howell to Antoine Green. The answer of... Joe, Jesse, this will be yours. Who is Sam Howell? <laughs> that is the correct. On the screen. Yeah, it is Sam Howell. We're gonna, ask, okay. We've got to ask the questions before we see the answer. This player is one of five to have 1,000 receiving yards in a season in UNC history. Who is Daz Newsome? So did someone give you these answers? No, no. I'm auditioning to get on the actual show. <laughs> oh, well, if that's the case, Let's Jeopardy go. is going way down. Hold it is great. Joseph, you are correct. It is Daz Newsome. North Carolina wins 49 to 9. Congratulations, Let's go, Galloway. To Catherine, you and me. Mac and Miss Sally. You know, we're going to, we're having, <laughs> we got this. When we go to the championship, we're going to have game room and, and game there. night in Joey's room. De'Eric King to Brevin Jordan, Miami Duke. This was all Hurricanes all night. Miami hadn't played in three weeks. Looked like it. They fumbled on the second play of the game. But after that, it was all De'Eric King and the Kane. Mike Harley in stride. How about Miami's defense? Forced five turnovers in this game. Four fumbles, one interception. Held Duke to 177 yards. How about Miami's defense? Even better. Hold them to a shutout. 48 nothing. That sets up the fun one with North Carolina. Looking forward to that one. Iowa State, you know the story by now. 
Haven't won a championship since 1912. Brees Hall inside. Looks like he's going to be stopped. But this is why Brees Hall needs to be considered for the highest. Brees Hall is so good in the zone running game because he has patience. He's always looking for the cutback or to bounce it outside. Then it was Brock Purdy's time, and it is so Purdy when he runs this offense well. And Brock Purdy accounted for four touchdowns in this game, three passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. Purdy to Hall has been the story all season for the Cyclone. Outside of Baylor, these last couple weeks, Purdy's making real good decisions. Four total TDs for him. And how about Iowa State clinching a spot in the Big 12 title game? I love it. First time in program history. Here's Matt Campbell. Well, you know, these 16 seniors, they're, they're magical individuals. You know, they came here and they persevered and they came to this program when it was 3-9. and nine. And, you know, all of this was just a hope. And I think the character, the resiliency and the toughness of our senior class has given us a chance to be really special. They will meet Oak. Oklahoma, who had Baylor on Saturday, first and goal, third quarter, Spencer Rattler to Theo Weiss back of the end zone. And Oklahoma started the season one and two. Now they're going for six in a row as they're on their way to the Big 12 championship game. And as we see Rattler continuing to get more comfortable, first year of the starter for Lincoln Riley here to Braden Willis. Offense struggled, though. This should have been picked. They struggled on third down. As a result, they snapped their 60-game streak where they scored at least 28 points. How about the hit Spencer Rattler? Today? Oklahoma now 28-3 all-time against Baylor, 27-14 the final. So just like the ACC, Big 12 championship game is going to be a rematch. In the regular season, it was good. Oklahoma and Iowa State met in a game that was even as they get on the field. And oh, by the way, news coming out from Oklahoma as they prepare for this game. Shane Beamer, assistant coach, Oklahoma, set to be the head coach of South Carolina in the SEC. Still ahead on college football final. Maybe an undercard game in the SEC between Arkansas and Missouri. What a finish we had. Plus, a true freshman ran wild. And Colorado, what do they have to say? Can they start 4-0? The answer is yes. Thank you for the tweet, Mark Johnson. Much more to come on the show. Matt, Jesse, Joey back with the college football final. TCU hosting number 15, Oklahoma State. Eight minutes left, fourth quarter. TCU down one. Max Duggan to Darius Davis. What a play, 71 yards. Max Duggan had a big game, 265 passing, 104 rushing. They would go for two. They would get it to go up by seven. They had to come back in this one. It's been an up and down year for Gary Patterson and his team. Ensuing Oklahoma State possession, Spencer Sanders heads for the end zone but appears to score before going out of bounds. Replay says he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, they would review it, and the replay shows Sanders stepped out twice before actually reaching the pylon. Sanders was ultimately ruled out at the seven-yard line. All right, so then take a look at this. After the play, Trevon Morig pushes Tay Martin. It's aggressive. Sanders has some words. Merig taunts them. Sanders passes. Picked off by Marig. What a turn of events. TCU started one and three, and they finished Big 12 play five and four. Good turnaround, good comeback. Texas playing for nothing but that UT pride. Roshan Johnson runs it through traffic. And Texas ran the ball well in this game. Johnson, 14 carries, 139 and three touchdowns. But the story was the true freshman, Bijan Robinson. He was rated the third best running back coming out of high school. This guy is going to be the next stud running back for the Texas Longhorns. And it's good to see them fighting. They had some key opt-outs on offense and defense this week. But they go out and they hang 69 on Kansas State. Their most points since in, in a game since December of 2000. Five. Arkansas, Missouri, this one was wild. Larry Roundtree, nine yards for the score, all tied at 40. Yeah, surprisingly one of the better games of the day. Roundtree, 185 and three touchdowns. Then K.J. Jefferson, no Felipe Franks on Saturday, finds Mike Woods. Felipe Franks out with a rib injury, so the freshman quarterback, he looked poised, and he has tremendous arm talent. So Sam Pittman decides to go for two, tipped, caught by Woods. What a catch. Arkansas takes a 48-47 lead, and Missouri fans can't believe it. They're like, this thing was over. And this is where you know things are going your way. Your Arkansas tipped in the air. You make a play, 
Now can you close it out? 26 seconds left. Connor Bazalek finds Damon Hazelton, 12 yards. That transferred from Ball State, then went to Virginia Tech. Now he's at Missouri. Do we have a college kicker situation? The answer is no. Harrison Nevis, 32-yard winner. Mizzou, what a finish. 50 to 48, the final. Iowa, Illinois. Third quarter, Spencer Petrus to Amir Smith Marset, four yard four yard touchdown. And Illinois was up 14 zip early in this game. Looked like they were just going to roll over Iowa. But then Iowa, they've been playing good ball of yeah. like four and two on the season. Near Petrus to Sean yeah, Byer. Now won five in a row. And the good news for them, Petrus, who's had interception issues all season, didn't throw any in this one. Committee ranked him number 19 this past Tuesday. What will happen this week? And Iowa lost to Northwestern, so they won't be playing the Big Ten Championship. It looks like 35-21 Iowa the win. And here it is, my favorite part of the program, the Matt Berry and Rudy Participation and Effort Award. This so it's a week. Jonathan Terry from Colorado State. We're number 93. Matt, effort. this might be your This week. is my week. Look, look at the angle. Come on. Got the angle, yeah, Matt. Man. This might be your chance, Matthew. What happened? Got the angle. Let's go. Right about here, though, Barry, is my question, because it looks like you're starting to run out of gas, and not just that, but how about the alligator? <laughs> <laughs> alligator. Oh. Like, Barry, you had the angle. Why? Quit letting me down. That, Get him. The hammies are getting tight. Alligator right here at the end. At the end. <laughs> I will have my vengeance in this life or another. Make the play. I'm sick of I'm sick of it. Oh, by the way, top plays. There were five of them, and they are really, really good. Uh, plus, it's Jesse's turn on that's a dollar because he didn't know we were on live TV earlier on Saturday. At some point, Jesse Palmer will pay attention yes. that we're on yes. live TV. Oh, here we go. Okay. Rankings on Tuesday probably won't be much movement, but certainly a lot to discuss. College football playoff rankings Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, ESPN. Pac-12 times, Stanford and Washington. Washington came in undefeated. Davis Mills, the lob to Scooter Harrington. And Stanford started off this season 0-2. They're going for their second straight win, trying to knock off an undefeated Washington. And guys, it was 31-10 at that point. Early fourth quarter, Washington down. Sean McGrew pushes his way in. Washington's had some slow starts now these last two weeks, and this offense has really had to kick it into high gear late, try and claw back into games. And then Mills, this may be one of the plays of the day. Simi Fioko, what a great one-handed catch by Fioko. Got the interference call, flag down, hold me Army. He only needed one for the one-handed catch. Stanford would win 31 to 26. Good for them. Turning it around, as you said, now two straight. Washington's first loss of the season. Keep it Pac-12. Oregon and Cal. 20 seconds, 26 seconds left in the half. Oregon down. Cyrus Habibi Lakio runs it in for the touchdown. Virtual lock implications for Jesse. And this play was set up by a 67-yard wheel route catch by running back Travis Dye. So I'm feeling great right about now. Yeah, you minus nine. You, you like the points. Cal hadn't won a game, but Chase Garbers to Nico Ramijo, 28-yard touchdown. And the problem for Oregon, Cal had the ball 36 minutes to 24 minutes for Oregon. Ramijo with the great catch. Then Tyler Shuck tries to scramble. Oh, and, no. and this has been the problem for yeah, Oregon all yeah, season long. They've had turnover issues, turned it over twice in this game. Yuck. I mean, at this point, you're not even expecting to cover. I mean, no, they weren't going to cover. No. But were they going to win the football? Oh. This is two straight losses for Oregon now. Oregon 17 points in this one, averaging over 38 per game. No cover for Jesse. Let's just Palmer. skip this one. All right, so final virtual lock implication of the program. Rice and Marshall, Joey's virtual lock, 23-point favorite with the thundering herd. We love their quarterback, Grant Well, we did. Well, we did. He, he threw five interceptions in this game. He's only a freshman. Four coming in, though. He's extremely talented. And I don't care how good of a team you are. And their defense has been phenomenal. They got Knox at running back, who's been phenomenal. Guys, I want to you throw five picks, you're just not going to win. Again, they were 23. Three-point favorites to Rice, who was the first team since 1961 to be 7-0 and get shut out by a team with a losing record. 20 to nothing was the final. The thundering herd flat out the stumbling herd on Saturday. Entered the game 7-0, shut out by a team with a losing record. In the AP poll era, only two other teams have lost in that fashion. And I'm going to 
guys, I'm going to say it. You know, I, I wish you guys nothing but success on virtual locks. I don't know. Mm. Mm. That's the worst virtual lock pick mm. of the year. I mean, I don't feel good about it. We've been a 500 ball club for a while now, and I can promise you this. I'm just going overs from here on out. I'm 7-1 and one picking overs. That's all I'm doing from here. I don't care what happens. Give me the over. All right. Well, and I, I'm just going to pick Alabama. Okay. Twice. Well, for that Every pick week. today, the Marshall pick, I'm about to give you a dollar. I mean, it hurts. Yeah, we got a new segment this year on College Football Final. It's called That's a Dollar. We fine each other a dollar for saying or doing stupid things. You have a chance at greatness, and then you just kick it out. That's, that's oh. definitely a dollar. Doink misses. Ah. Look at his boy 34 right here. He's like, no, oh, no. You didn't even headbutt you have doing? Before. Go sell some lemonade, bring back 50 cents each, and pay your dollar. I don't care. Get in here. We need help. We're having trouble tackling. <laughs> like, and then they knock him down. And then he's dapping them down like, guys, I gave it all I had. I'm off for a little tomfoolery, but not petty theft. 50 cents per towel, that's your dollar. It's a terrible camera angle. Whoa. It's a game. We're here. We're playing. Did I miss class? Actually, there was a kid, but TV was not ready. This is ill-advised every day of the week. All right, time to hand out more dollars to the officials on Saturday. We're just getting in the way, sir. That's a dollar. Watch his hat come flying off. Great accuracy, though, by Will Howard. <laughs> That's seriously. And then in Texas a and Auburn, and again, it's like, it's a tough job. I don't want to do it, but gentlemen, dollars for for just standing there. Watch the Auburn defender come over, by the way, and start laughing. He's like, dude, you play good defense. Yeah, seriously, we could use you all the time. You. Appreciate you, bro. Virginia Tech needed all the help oh, they could get against Clemson. They're up 7-3. Best way to slow down Clemson? They used to do this in the, in, in the old days when everyone's playing on grass, make it really wet to slow teams down. Definitely work nowadays with turf out there, but come on. Some, someone's getting fired. That is a dollar. Miles Marshall's a talented sophomore receiver from Indiana. He's thinking, I'm going to catch this touchdown. I'm going to be on an ESPN uh, highlight. This is so money. Well, you're absolutely right, kid, sir. You are on an ESPN highlight. You're on college football final, and it is money. And his that man is, is thinking, that's a dollar. That's a dollar. Dare to be great. All right, guys, time now for top plays from the dollars to the best. Bo Nix, what a play out of the Auburn quarterback. This is a really good defense of Texas A&M, and Bo Nix makes them look like they're high school tackling. Bo Nix ran it, we say just 67 yards, yeah, but, to yeah. gain five. But it is a great touchdown, great balance. He's a terrific athlete. I'll tell you, I'm just impressed the officials didn't blow the play dead, so we got to see some Bo Nix greatness there. Number four, Oklahoma State, TCU. Spencer Sanders' pass is tipped, but Tay Martin, stay with oh, it. Oh, come back, make the catch. Tay Martin used to be making plays at Washington State, but look at this. Coming back, he's got a defender's arm in front, maintains possession of the ball, keeps the hands underneath it. TCU still got the upset, though. Yes, they did. Number three, Colorado, Arizona. Sam Neuer's pass intercepted by Anthony Pandy. Boy, that was dandy. Watch the one-handed stab by a linebacker going the opposite direction. Colorado would go on to win this game, but that is a great interception. 24-13 the final. Number two, Dylan Morris finds Ty Jones. This, I thought, was the catch. Yeah, Washington day. was down 24-3, so you got to start taking shots to your best deep threat. Six-foot-four Ty Jones sticking out that right arm. His teammates could not believe the play he had made. All right, so the number one play, though, Devontae Smith, because he had such a huge day, but that catch, incredible. Alabama would get the beat down, and Devontae Smith would have a career day. How about a little upset in this one? Eastern Michigan, shout out to my alma mater, Western Michigan football, for giving up 50, a 50 burger. We had an angry fan tweet in, and it's the most coveted award, individual award in all of college football. Helmet stickers are imminent when college football final concludes. Ball, Tulsa and Navy, third quarter tied at six. Zach Smith to Josh Johnson, 66 yard touchdown. How about Tulsa outrush Navy in this game as they get ready for a huge matchup against Cincinnati? Ooh. They've clinched a spot in the AAC championship game. Tulsa playing good football. They get the win, 19-6. Time now, best part of the program, the helmet sticker ceremony. Joey Galloway, please. I'm going Corey Rucker. 
Arkansas State against UL Monroe. Nine catches, 310 yards, four receiving touchdowns. The 310 is the most by a freshman in FBS history. Bijan Robinson is a six foot tall, 222 pound, true freshman running back who runs like a grown man. He only carried it nine times against Kansas State, ran for a buck 72, and scored three times. And I say good for Texas coming off the loss to Iowa State. Brock Purdy accounted for four touchdowns on Saturday, but more importantly, almost a program sticker playing for a conference championship for the first time since 1912. Seven touchdowns, zero interceptions the last three games for Purdy. Devontae Smith, eight catches, 231, and three receiving touchdowns. He's the first player in SEC history with four career 200-yard receiving games. Colorado's Jarek Broussard, I think, is one of the best running backs in the country that nobody knows about or talks about. He had 25 carries against Arizona, ran for 301 yards, but didn't score a touchdown. Became the first player in Pac-12 history to run for over 300 yards, but not get it. That's hard to Did do. Did you think stick Coastal was not going to get a sticker today? No. The Mullets, C.J. Marable, 23 rushes, 132 yards, two touchdowns, and a program statement win for the Chanticleers. What are they doing out there? They're doing this? Yeah. Right now they're partying. They're this, I guess. Helmet weird. stickers, helmet stickers. See you guys next Saturday.